Hey guys and welcome to my YouTube channel ESP Daniela. So for today's video, we are going to be testing out ChatGPT3 versus Google and see which one does better. Feel free to let me know in the comments which ones you think did better with each particular round. I'm going through 10 rounds, 10 different scenarios that I'm using with this comparison video. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first prompt that I gave the chat box was to create a code in HTML with a money symbol floating across the screen. And as you can see here, it gave me a code It generated that automatically. But then I wanted it to be 10 times bigger, the money symbol. So then I asked for that. And so it gave me a new code. So let's just copy this and then see how it looks on my course page here. Let's see, copy the code in, we'll paste it in. Full screen. Let's see, let's bring it down here. Oop, there we go. It works. And of course, I tried it with Google, the same exact question to create a code in HTML with the money symbol. And these were the results I got. It wasn't really specific, as specific as what the chat box has to offer. And then the next question I asked it was, can you create a lesson plan for a science teacher teaching about the rock cycle to first graders? And it gave me a step-by-step -step process as seen here. Feel free to pause your screen so you can read it on your own time. And then when I asked Google the same question, can you create a lesson plan for as a science teacher? It went to this link and various other links. And so you guys can compare and see which you think gives a better result. So this just goes to show you how they differ and how they may be alike. And then the next thing I asked the chat box from OpenAI was, what college majors make the most money? And from here it said, according to a recent study, these are the following majors, engineering, computer science, business, economics, math, health professions. And so when I did the same thing for Google, it showed me basically like the same list of majors. So they're essentially pretty much the same with that. Next up, I asked, can you give me a salary range for each of these positions? And so with ChatGPT3, it gave me a salary range 65 to 75. And so when I put that separately into Google plus salary info, so here it says with ChatGPT3, uh, salary range for engineering is 65000 to 75000 So let's see what this article from Google has to say for engineering. Here's the range, 64000 to 68000 So they're fairly close with the start of the range, but not so much with the ending of the range. So that shows you how they differ there with their results. And then I also asked for the AI to put this information into a spreadsheet. And I really love this feature because if you're trying to organize this information and keep track of things you're looking into doing or applying for, whatever it may be, you can make it into a spreadsheet. And of course with Google, you can't really do that via their search. You would have to separately go to Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel in order to access that. And then I asked the AI, I am a college student looking for scholarships. Can you list 10 for minorities in liberal arts? And this is what it showed here. So it's showing me scholarships from the NAACP, UNCF. However, as a black woman, a lot of these scholarships I would not be eligible for because they're for other minority demographics. So then I asked the follow-up question of, can you have the list of scholarships specific to black students? And then from there, it gave me a different list of scholarships that black students can alone be eligible for or in addition to alongside other minority groups. And so when I compare this over to Google, asking the same questions of scholarships for minorities in liberal arts, this is what it shows. And as you can see, the very first two links that they show me are in fact ads. And this isn't to say that ads, you can't win scholarships from them. Like for example, the Taco Bell Foundation scholarship, I've had several students win theirs anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000. And by the way, make sure to check my bio description for resources, scholarship resources. That's what my content's mainly about on here. But anywho, let's just go down to this third link here, liberal arts scholarships, and it redirects me to scholarships.com. And as you can see here, let's set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So a little over 
15 scholarships, I want to say, for liberal arts listed on scholarships.com. Of course, there's way more than that, but this is like a starter. Now, as far as comparing the results from each of these, I personally would prefer this because it gives you a direct link to apply for these scholarships, as well as stating the deadlines and how much they amount for. And of course, with the AI, you can ask for it to make this into a table, into a spreadsheet with deadlines. So I asked for it to do that and it gave me deadlines. Now these may or may not be the deadlines. Feel free to check and confirm on your own because scholarship deadlines, they vary from year to year. So it's always prone to changing, but that's what it showed up for here. So moving on, the next question I wanted to ask the AI was, I'm stuck between choosing engineering or journalism as a major in college. Can you let me know the pros and cons of each? So here's what it showed. It started off with the pros of engineering followed by its cons and then also the pros of journalism and its cons. So it gives you a pretty good rundown of the differences between the each pros and cons. Like for example, it says engineers often have good job prospects and can earn high salaries. That's a pro of it. And then a con for like journalism. The journalism industry is facing many challenges, including declining revenues and job cuts. And for those who don't know, I majored in broadcast journalism. Yes, unfortunately that is the case for the industry. So if I were to compare the results this time with Google of engineering versus journalism, First, it gives me this, and this is like a forum type of website where people give their honest opinions or fact-based answers relating to certain subjects. And then it references to, it recommends video content to learn from. And so the main difference between ChatGPT3 versus searching for the same question with Google, because these two majors are so different from each other, engineering versus journalism, you can't really find like a existing blog post that thoroughly provides the pros and cons of each. If I were to instead say the difference between computer science versus computer engineering, I might find something for that. But since these are not that much related, you're not really gonna find a one piece of information that has both in it. So moving on, I also wanted to ask the AI a pretty fun type of essay prompt. So I asked it, can you write an essay comparing a masochist versus a sadist in the style of Peter Griffin from Family Guy? And this is what it wrote. Uh, let me read some of it. As a guy who's been around the block a few times, I've seen some weird stuff. And believe me, there's no one weirder than a masochist and a sadist. For those who don't know, a masochist is someone who gets off on pain. They love nothing more than getting smacked around, whipped, or whatever. On the other hand, a sadist is someone who gets off on causing pain. They love nothing more than dishing out the punishment and watching their victim squirm. I can see Peter Griffin saying that. <laughs> so of course, when I asked Google the same exact question, I was not expecting it to give a proper response for it. It basically just tells you the differences between sadism versus masochism. So it's not really particular to Peter Griffin because that was very specific. So moving on, I also asked the AI, what is the outline of a standard research paper? And I really like how it provided this information bullet by bullet. So it starts off with the title, introduction, literature review, methods, results, discussion, conclusions, and references. So yes, that is the standard format for a research paper. I've written plenty so far in grad school. And so I asked the same question for Google and it also gave me a pretty solid answer, but with less information. So it says here, the first result, introduction, methods, results, discussion, but it leaves out other parts such as the literature review. So the next prompt that I have for chat GPT-3 was, can you write me a research paper, including all these elements about TikTok versus Instagram? Also use 10 APA style citations dating between 2019 and 2020. And the elements I'm meaning are from the earlier question, cause I said, include all the elements for a research paper. And as you can see here, it started off with a title, a title of the paper, Comparing TikTok versus Instagram, a study of user engagement and content sharing. Starts with the introduction, the literature review, and let's see, the methods. It even goes into quantitative versus qualitative data results. And also one thing that I have noticed with using ChatGPT3 is that it'll stop at a certain point with the word count. So if you wanted to continue off where it left off, 
you would have to say continue or even continue to the end of the paper to be more specific. And then it finally shows references with what I indicated earlier with a prompt to have them dated between 2019 to 2020. And as you can see, they're in APA style. And it only gave me at first three references. So I said, I need seven more because my initial prompt said to give 10 citations, 10 references total. So it added seven more that I could put into this paper. And this is just so insane. I can only imagine what students would be using this. Now, me personally, I wouldn't really use this because I like writing things originally on my own. I just really enjoy writing. So that's just me. So next up, I wanted to try out how it did with math questions. So I pulled up this blog from Google. It was one of the very first results that popped up and it says 35 fun math questions with answers. And so this was the first one that I asked it. Using only addition, how do you add eight eights and get the number 1000? So when I ask, so this is the actual answer, you would add 888 plus 88 plus 888 to get 1,000. But then with the AI, it did something totally different. And this question says using only addition, but for whatever reason, it decided to use subtraction at the end so that doesn't properly answer the question, even though it got the same answer result. So that was wrong. And I was like, okay, let's try the next math question on here, which is Sally is 50 years old and her mother is 80. How many years ago was Sally's mother times her age? And so the answer was this, 40 years ago. But with the AI, as you can see, it gave us an answer that was totally different. So if you're trying to use this for like math, it may or may not work. So please guys, as it stands, it is not 100% accurate with math in particular. So the next question I asked was, what are some free resources to study for the AP exams? And this is what it showed me. So it recommended college boards, resources, Khan Academy, AP Central, and of course using your teacher and their resources. And then when I went to Google asking the same question of free resources to study for AP exams, the very first result that it showed me was of course an ad, a Google ad. And finally, you start to see results that are not ads after you scroll past that part. And so in terms of comparing these two results, I personally would still prefer using Google simply because it hyperlinks directly to these certain resources that I'm needing. Whereas with this resource, the AI, you would have to copy and paste the name of that particular resource into Google or some other search engine in order to be redirected to their website. So it leaves one less step for you to do by using Google. And now for the final question that I asked the AI for this particular video is where online can I find scholarships for graduate students? And ChatGPT3, it responded that there are several online resources where graduate students can find scholarships, including the following. So it doesn't really show you like a list of websites particular for finding grad school scholarships. Like I know personally that some websites you can use are like Profello and gograd.org. So it's not really giving you that, but it does give pretty helpful information that you can look from professional organizations and associations, which is really helpful because I personally won several scholarships for grad school from professional organizations. So yes, make sure you're looking into that resource if you're in grad school or even undergrad applying as a current college student, your freshman through senior year of college. And so then when I put that same question into Google for grad school scholarships, again, oh my gosh, <laughs> the very first four links are all ads. Only when you scroll down do you start to find websites that are not. So if I go here, eight excellent resources to find grad school scholarships from studentloanhero.com. Finally, you'll see a list. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And also, since you are probably still interested in learning more about ChatGPT3, I made another video on how and what this means for the future of education, schools, students, and so forth. So make sure to check that out. And I also give some advice on how to fully optimize this as a student yourself, if you're a student watching this. Okay, bye.